Hello. So... I wanted to discuss my Buddhist meditation practice, which seems to be going well. Um, I have certain kinds of things that keep coming up in my meditation practice. I'm not really getting stuck as much as I used to. I'm able to not get stuck in places where before when I had practiced less, I would get stuck. So, um, I guess I've been practicing formal, um, 40 minute Zazen meditation sessions at least once a week. It seems to help to practice with other people. Um, so just sitting with the cosmic mudra hand position um, with someone for 40 minutes is the main Zen meditation practice. Um, Um, one of the things I'm realizing is that I should be grateful and focus on gratitude and see every opportunity, see every situation which is challenging um, as an opportunity to improve myself and be grateful for those um, situations because they're, I should see them as perfectly conducive to meditation and just be very happy that I have these opportunities to meditate instead of th seeing them as challenging um like if there's a belligerent person at work or something like that i can um i can see it as like um the dokusan which is the formal uh, meeting of a student with a teacher in a zen sashin session sashin is the all day sitting um or i don't know how that works but um I can see a belligerent person at work as like a meeting, a dokusan meeting with the, um, the meditation teacher. And it's like, um, it's like a koan and, um, I can see it as like a paradoxical koan and, um, enjoy it and, uh, be grateful for those challenges which can help me to improve myself. Um, so sitting in meditation for, for 40 minutes once per week is good, but doing that more often is even better. Um, you know, it's really kind of like people would think it's absurd if they could understand like how many hours a person like myself can devote to meditation practice in a week or in a day. You know, sometimes it can be much, much more than 40 minutes. And you wonder why, why you're often so distracted. Because when you're meditating, that's the time when you're most yourself and you're most focused and you're most, you're discovering the most meaning and value. So it's, it's a, it's strange that people don't spend more, um, spend more energy and time on discovering, um, discovering this so if you're doing the zen zazen meditation practice you're gradually moving in the right direction even if it's a slow movement you're moving in the right direction and one of the things that keeps coming up is i realized that the best kind of person is not necessarily the celebrity or the, or the politician. 
the best kind of person is maybe just like a humble person that no one knows about, that no one, um, someone, I don't know, just someone off in the corner that no one, you know, pays attention to. So it's like the spirit world is invisible in the background or something. So I think I'm giving up on trying to um, get fancy uh, clothes like a suit jacket and those kinds of things because it's too expensive and um, there's no point. So I'm giving up on trying to get a suit jacket. Um, there's a spiritual lecturer named Peter Brown who I followed for a number of years, and I don't know what happened to him. He used to lecture at a bookstore near my house, and he would um, put videos of his lectures up on YouTube and rec audio recordings on his website. But he seems to have stopped all activity that I can find online, so I don't know if he died or what happened to him. But um, he was an important part of my life for so many years. I have four books of Peter Brown's. Um, I read them all. Uh, he's, I would say, like one of the most influential people in my whole life. Um, I'm practicing Zazen right now. There's, um, there's always this noticing and then forgetting. You notice the indeterminate truth of the universe and then you forget it and you fall back into delusion and then you can remember it again and there's really no limit to like how much you can uh, remember and understand the indeterminate truth of the universe if you really like devote yourself to meditation and spiritual practice you can stay in a deep samadhi state like all the time basically and that's beneficial for everybody in certain ways and there's no reason why anybody um, can't access what's called Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi all the time. You can, and sometimes there's this fear of spiritual aloneness that goes along with it. And because you're accessing something so profound and you can't necessarily, you're leaving everyone behind and you're not really you know, that's why sometimes people say it's taboo to go into samadhi by yourself and you should only go into samadhi with other people. That's what a Hare Krishna told me a long time ago. They have that rule. But um, it's... It kind of makes sense to just access Sahaja Novakalpa Samadhi as much as you can.
So it's like, you know, I, I, I'm mad at myself for forgetting about, for forgetting about Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi instead of accessing it all the time and forgetting spiritual truths that I've learned. But really there's no reason to be upset about it. Just wanted to talk about meditation, so that's all. Thank you.